Hello, class. Yeah, it's wonderful to see you all back. We are going to register. It's been a long summer. I hope you've enjoyed your holidays. Yeah, okay. Um, so, uh, who have we got here? Cedric? See, si, Senor Space. I see you there, Cedric. Beecho? See, si, Senor Space. I'm saying your name right this year, mate. You better appreciate that. Yeah, you're here too. Pablo? 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 I'm here. See, oh. see, me. Yeah, I didn't see you in your new seat, bud. No, that's fine. Me I will. Here. Why Why are you getting grumpy with me? Do you still want that move, dear pub? Well, you're not getting it. So sit down in that chair, get comfy. You're here for another year. Imagine thinking I was not going to let him turn back up. Hello folks and welcome back. It's Park 2 Primera, episode number 15, the start of season number 3. Yesterday was the pre-season transfer special, something that we've not done before. It may return in the future. Um, I'm still kind of awaiting to see what kind of feedback people have because, shocking confession here, I've got to record a couple days ahead at the moment because I'm going to be away for a day or two. So I have no idea if you loved or hated yesterday's video. I mean, feel free to remind me of your thoughts of it down in the comments of this video, I suppose. Shall we talk about the rest of the transfer dealings since you were last here? So in terms of transfer business, I've spent a bit of money. I rejigged the wage budget and the transfer budget, of course. Uh, last episode, you saw the dilemma I had. Lots of players wanted kind of silly amounts of money that I frankly couldn't afford. And in the end, I decided I was better off focusing on youth, focusing on young players who didn't have outrageous demands and trying to just free up some wages where possible. So Zachary has left the club. A little bit sad about this, but of course it was a deal that kind of needed to be done. Um, last episode, we were talking about possible loan replacements for him. I have got a loan replacement, someone who is going to slot into the first team to kind of directly take his role. Elsewhere in the team, a load of players went out on loan. Players like Lolo uh, went on loan to hopefully get some regular first team football this year. Saul Garcia left to go to Granada, really just to free up some wages. A player who was on about £1,000 a week at 22 years old. He's not going to feature in the first team, so it felt redundant having him around. Unfortunately, no one wanted to sign him for any money. And while that was a similar story with players like Traver here, who, as you can see, has departed on a freebie, gone to a team in the league that we just left. Ultimately, he was on £2,000 a week. It helps the finances out just to, you know, remove these players who are just not going to feature in the first team from our wage structure. Elsewhere on the outs, Anigo left us to go to Deportivo. In the end, he was sold for £100,000. A player who was a really important part of our team year number one. Year number two just wasn't anywhere near the team. He was one of the few B-team players who departed for small sums of money, which ultimately just helped even out the bucks. So with those sales, a few players given away for free and a number of players loaned out, as you can see here. We made some moves in the market. We actually spent some money, £400,000 to be precise. There's one player here who is significantly more expensive than the others, and that is Ivan Gehome. I, I don't know. Uh, he is 16 years old. He was playing, as you can see here, for Estoril, who play in the Portuguese Liga Nosh. Uh, he was their hot prospect. Last year, we made a bit of a habit of signing players from the likes of Porto, Benfica. This year, I went back to look in Portugal to see if there were any young players available who'd maybe appeared, and while Ivan was one such player, capped at under-19 level, he is absolutely insane for this level. Uh, naturally a centre defensive mid, for us, I actually think he's going to end up playing mostly as a centre-back. That is where I see his long-term future. I didn't think, when I left things last time, I was going to be spending £350,000 on a player, but in this man... I think it's a fee worth paying. Elsewhere on the ends, Pettersson joined us from Mould. Uh, I'll let you guess the price that I spent for this guy. 17 years old. Uh, he was a centre mid with his contract expiring. And we've signed him for £85. I mean, who said you couldn't get a good deal? Like, I've spent more at car boot sales than I have on this guy. He looks absolutely great, though. 17 years old. Mercenary personality I don't love too much. But I think he can be a good little squad player in the centre mid position. Of course, any player under the age of 19 comes with the added bonus of we don't have to register them, which is super, super valuable. And I think Pettersson is a really good addition that kind of ticks that box. Elsewhere on the ins, we signed Jerry Cumby. Uh, he was playing in the lower leagues of Portugal. So you might sit there wondering, how did you find him, Jack? Well, when I was looking for players with contract status expired, I decided just to set the age is to at max 16. See who came up 
Jerry was presented to me. And I mean, look at this man. He comes from a Portuguese team that I'm going to be honest, I have no familiarity with whatsoever, but they've got exceptional academy coaching and excellent youth recruitment. So maybe a team if you're doing this save game yourself to check out. Um, but yeah, he was available as a freebie because he was only on an amateur contract. So again, bargain hunting. I, I feel like I got some really good deals this summer. Elsewhere on the ins, the only other player who joined us for some money was Hampel here, who is a Czech under-21 player. Again, he was 17 years old. His contract was expired at Sparta Praha, and we signed him, as you can see here, for £51,000. Truth be told, in the top division of the Czech Republic, he didn't have a great performance last year. Only 13 appearances with an average rating of 6.54. But as someone who doesn't need to be registered to us, who has a ton of versatility in terms of positions he can play, I think he is a really, really good good addition that kind of fulfills that requirement we have not to spend huge sums of money on players. And well, besides those players signed for some money, we did loan in a couple of players. The one who I've already alluded to was Mbuku, who has joined us, as you can see here, from Stad Rem. Uh, he is 20 years old. He is left-footed, can play anywhere across the front three attacking midfield positions. For us, he is going to be playing out on the right-hand side, cutting in on his left foot. He is a player who I think is going to take Mujica's spot in the first team, at least to start the year. You can see the comparison between the players here. Mbuku, just a little bit quicker, a little more physical. I think that's going to help him out in the wide areas and of course has the bonus of the fact he's going to be cutting in on his stronger foot for us. And well, the other player we've loaned in, a player who should be relatively familiar if you've watched a little bit of Premier League football this year, uh, Reese Williams is joining us from Liverpool, 21 years old, really, really good player, only paying £3,000 a week for him. That's just the loan agreement that we have in terms of the wages. He is here for one season. His contract at Liverpool expires at the end of the year. I would love to be in a position where we're snapping him up for a freebie, you know, midway through January because we're able to build a rapport with him. Ultimately for us, though, he is a top quality centre back. No fee involved. Slot straight into the first team. Was a very late deal done, so he's not had a pre-season with us. That perhaps a little bit of a cause for concern. So anyway, looking at the financial side of things, they look pretty good right now. Of course, debt has been an ongoing issue for us. But in terms of income this month, you can see here the season ticket revenue money's come in, as has the TV revenue, which looks like it's going to come in at about £400,000 a month. That is so far above what we had last year, where, as you can see here, we we're getting about hundred grand in TV money across the entire season. So suddenly, that big pressure that was on our shoulders, all the debt, I don't think is going to be as much of an issue. Of course, you notice that I spent £400,000. To do that, we lowered the wage budget. I think it was in the region of £95,000, maybe slightly less than that. It's now down at 86000 We are spending 84500 of that. And in terms of overall balance, only 309 k in the red. I wanted to say in the black. We're not, we're not out of debt yet. Maybe, maybe in a month or two, though, the way things are looking. And well, here is the team of 2022, at least to start the year. Um, this is the team that I would love to start today's game. Di Vicente is out injured. Last episode, and I think the episode before, we talked about the possibility of moving on the centre mids. Just Andy has decided to forgive me. He is happy again at the club. As for Di Vicente, uh, as you can see here, he dislocated his shoulder. He's been out for two to three months with it. What that meant was there was absolutely no chance to sell him in the summer. As a result, he's not fit for today's game but he's also not left as yet. I have a sneaking suspicion that that injury is going to put off any real interest in him. Elsewhere in the team, though, Mbuku comes in on the right-hand side alongside Torre and Bicho. Bicho is in the process of signing a new contract. He was asking for it. His contract is up at the end of the year. I kind of wish he wasn't asking for £6,000 a week, but ultimately... It's the kind of money that we've got to pay to keep hold of some of our best players. Elsewhere in the team, Kabir is going to start up front with us. And when it comes to the defence, a little bit of a shake-up here. Lopez and Carassa hold their positions at left-back and right-back, although this year Lopez is going to turn 33. Expect to see Tony Herrero come into the first team uh, at some point. But at centre-back, we're going to be going with Rojas and Williams today. Of course, Rojas joined us from Atleti. We talked about him last time. And Reese Williams, that super late addition, despite the fact he's relatively new to the system and the squad, I think when you compare him to Matic, it's quite an easy decision to make Williams play. He is probably the most talented of all the defenders we have in the team. Um, I'm really hoping that he's going to turn out to be an inspired bit of late business that's going to help us throughout this year. Now, of course, Di Vicente is injured for today's game. So what that does mean is that Pablo Martinez is going to come in to make his debut at box-to-box -box midfielder 
because he joined us from Levante last year. Elsewhere in the team, Cedric also picked up an injury in pre-season. I don't think he's fit enough to play. He is not. So as a result, we've got to do a bit more rotation there. We're going to bring in Hardy, I think, onto the bench. And as for Di Vicente, I think we're going to bring in Peterson. Peterson and Ivan, the two youngsters who I would love to give some regular football to this year. They are kind of the two options we have for centre midfield on off the bench. In an ideal world, we go a little bit ahead against Pomfredina here and I can bring them in. So, of course, today's first game of the season is against a club we were promoted with last year. Uh, of course, if we just look at the season preview, you can see here they are predicted to struggle down in 17th. As for ourselves, well, we're now 25 to 1 odds to win the league. Uh, 13th out of all the teams, of course, the B teams behind my face. I'll, I'll move the face cam to the other side so you can see, but the B teams down at the bottom can't be promoted from this level, so they're not factored into the odds. Uh, in fact, if we just look at our pre-season billing under general, the actual media prediction is 19th. Uh, four teams go down in this league. 19th is one of those positions. This is definitely a year of just trying our best to stay up, but I do feel like with the additions we've made, we are going to be able to do it. So you've seen the team for today's game. You've seen the squad that's kind of amassed for this year. All in all, I'm pretty happy with the transfer business that we had. Last episode, I think you got to experience some of the frustration of the situation we were in. In the end, I decided I was better off going for some cheaper options who were younger, who I could sign on permanent deals for actual money rather than kind of lumbering ourselves with massive, massive contracts to, you know, have for the, for the long future players asking for the kind of money that was just going to cause everyone else in the team to ask for more money. Anyway, they've got a chance here early on. This is not what we want to see early on as Murillo whips it in. Lolo Pla hits it wide of the mark. I think Lolo Pla scored against us last year, so I'm a little bit scared of him. But yeah, not, not a great start here. They have the first chance of the game. So tactically, I've not really changed anything up going into this season. I want to see how we fare before I react too much. I feel like we've got a brand of football that's worked. Currently not working in this game. We're already approaching half time, and the only highlight we've seen so far was that highlight for them. I was hoping we were going to come out swinging here against a team who, of course, we were promoted with and are predicted to struggle. So it's a little bit tame thus far in this game. But into the second half we go. We're not going to make too many changes just yet. All in all, we have bossed possession for the most part, even if we aren't quite creating enough. But as we approach the hour mark here, you know what? I feel the pressure to make some moves. Let's see what we can do here. Uh, firstly, I think we're going to go to more attacking and we're going to look to be slightly more direct in our play. So let's bring in Mujica there. And Buku's not had a good game either out on the right-hand side. You know what? We'll bring in Hardy for him. I, I'm very tempted to make a triple change in the very first game. I'm very tempted to bring in Pettersson. Would that be mad? You know what? Let's hold on to a sub for now. First game of the season. Some players will have a bit of rustiness. The last thing I want here is a serious injury and not having an option on off the bench to bring on because I've already used all my subs early on. I mean, if we were hoping for a classic to start the season, I'm afraid to say it's not looking like one, but there's a chance here for us. Pablo whips in. Williams is there. And Reese Williams scores on his debut. He flew into France a matter of days ago to start his loan spell. He's very, very good in the air. And I'll tell you what, that is an absolute rocket of a header. Hits the crossbar, hits the ground, goes up into the roof of the net again. I think you get style points if you hit the crossbar and it goes in, at least in my eyes. Right, five minutes left. I'm still playing on attacking. I'm still playing. I probably probably shouldn't be. Let's go to positive here. Lopez, down the line to Bicho. Not sure we can expect Bicho to match his heroics of last year when it came to goal scoring, but... I mean, if he can do it, that would be great. Pablo Martinez now for us. Dinks over to Mejica, who's on off the bench. Should finish it. Puts it over, though. I mean, it's taken us a while to get into this game, but at least we are actually creating bits now. Uh, just Andy's got a book in. So we'll bring in Ivan, the 16-year-old from Portugal. He's hopped over the border. He's joined us. He's not going to have much time to have an influence on this game, but there is a minute left here. I mean, where is he? There he is. We found you, Ivan. He's slotting in at centre-back nicely, although can, can he put in a tackle? Of course he can. He wins it for Pablo. He gets slide tackled. It's going to break free. I mean, it's still only 1-0. <laughs> We've not won this yet. Bicho, inside to Ivan. You might be wondering, Jack, why are you not just calling him Gilherme? Which I guess is how you'd say the name. It's because I know I'm probably saying it wrong when I say that. Ivan's a cool name. Oh, they're breaking through. K. Okay. That is not okay. Ah, I really wanted to get a win to start this season, especially away from home. Would have been great. It's actually Ivan's pass that gives it away. 
I said he was a centre-back in the intro. Yes, he can play centre-mid. Why am I not playing him at centre-back? Oh, it's not a debut to remember. That's probably all she wrote for the game. Unless there's a crazy twist here. There are seconds left. Ball lumped up to Mejica. Hardy has it. Could we show some fight here? Pablo, he's through. He scores on Pablo Torre. We had bids for him in the summer. We rejected them all. We turned them all down. We said, no, thank you. We don't want your money, Osasuna. And he repays us with a goal. Oh, my word. I mean, you know what? I said a win to start the season away from home. It'd be blooming brilliant, wouldn't it? When Pablo was breaking through there, in my head I was sat thinking, that is not the man I want to see with the ball in that situation. That will do us. That will do me. A 2-1 win. Not sure we deserve it. Pablo gets man of the match. I mean, he should get man of the match. Well done. It's a good win. Didn't think it was going to be a win. And to those of you who stuck it out through the first 80 minutes when nothing happened, I salute you. You've been treated to that. And with that, we're up to sick. We're brilliant. We're gonna we're in the playoffs. Take a take a screenshot of that, Jack. One sec. I don't don't mean to be dramatic, but just there we go. Steam screenshot taken. Um we're in sixth, everyone. That is not an overly convincing result, but we'll take it. Reese Williams scores on his debut. And I'm a happy camper. I think I think we've been let off the hook. You can see here, it was considered the key match of the day. Two goals in added time. That doesn't happen very often. And Pablo Torre. You know what, mate? I'm very glad we haven't sold you. you. You might be unhappy, but you're doing quite well on the pitch. And he's still developing. He could. He's our key player, I think. Someone noted a couple of episodes ago, he was our hot prospect when we joined. He's our key player, man. And, uh, well, you can see why he's our key player. Was that performance right there? That was absolutely superb. My, oh, my, that was an insane result. I am absolutely chuffed with that. Do do think we got a little bit lucky. In terms of when we're going to be back next time, I'm not sure entirely yet. Uh, I'm going to play it by ear and kind of see who emerges the teams that we need to be wary of, kind of work out where we fit into the hierarchy. I'd like to think we can finish mid-table this year comfortably. Obviously, if we start to struggle a lot, the, suddenly the games around the teams below us become majorly significant. If we start to do quite well... We'll come back for a live com against the team who are top of the league or something. In terms of transfer business, there isn't actually any going on at the moment. We've not got a great deal of money to spend. In terms of squad registration, I'm right up against the limit. But to be honest, when I look across this squad on the whole, I'm very, very happy with the situation we're in. I don't really want to change anything. We've got some youngsters. We've got some experienced players. I think whilst Ivan, you know what? He nearly balls it up on his debut. This man is going to be... A really special player. You know when you play an FM save and you sign that first player and you're like, you, you are part of the long term. That's that's how I feel about Ivan. When he's leaving us in two years time and he's completely blown all his chances, you can look back and laugh at this moment. But I believe in you, Ivan. As I said, even if you did balls it up today. But anyway, guys, that's going to wrap up everything from me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video as always. If you have, drop a like on the video. Let me know what you're making my transfer business down in the comments. And until next time, it is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.